Welcome everyone to today's Midday Motivations with Nora Whalen and Copeland Richards. And we have a special, special guest today. Gail Harris is joining us. So switch things up and spice them up. I'm going to turn things right over to Copeland so he can have a little fun today. Yeah. So I understand that, you know, there's a lot of times where some people may be teaching, some people may be learning. Today I want to learn. And I know that Gail Harris has very good insight into this because I've actually watched her. We've hung out and I've actually seen her in action. And the question is, how do you set limits for our children without actually stifling their growth? How do you, how do you achieve that balance? Hmm. I can't say that I have a clear answer of how to do that right away. I think I just go with my gut with what's needed in the moment, but this little incident that just happened right before is um, we limit my son Lucas's screen time, and so I was just setting the timer before, and you were asking what are, you both were asking me, who don't have any children, what, what are you doing with that timer? So I was setting it for an hour, and then once the hour is over, actually he gets he gets two hours today, but the timer only goes to an hour. But um, so I set it for an hour, and when he you know when he reaches his limit, then he has to do something else. You know, I mean he has to either play Legos or read a book or just find something to do. I think that like if I gave him any more screen time, that that would be stifling his growth. I mean that's that's reason why we set the limits in the first place. So I don't know if that answers your question, but so no. well, I have a follow up. So is that screen time with TV, computers, everything, tools, anything? Yeah, and of course he does them all together. So it, actually, his birth, his <laughs> he's eleven, right? His birthday was yesterday. So for his birthday, we got him a tablet, you know, like a, a tablet. So before that, he had an he had an iPod, and so. Do you hear some kind of interference, or is that just me? No, I do. It's okay. Oh, okay. So anyway, um, you know, he'll watch. He'll do them all at the same time. Like he'll have the TV on and his tablet going, and I mean that's like massive screen coming in. I, I don't know if any of either of you have heard of the children's singer Rafi, because he was probably a little bit before your time, and I'm older than you guys. But um, he's been a children's singer that's been around for a really long time. Rafi, like a children's singer, and um, you know we have all his albums in the house and stuff. And he recently just wrote this book about um, the internet, and it's um, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's all about setting setting screen time limits for your kids. And I read this book, and it was amazing about just. Oh, it was. It's called light web, light web, dark web, and the point is, is that you know that the internet. There's the real light side of the internet, like what we're doing right now. I mean, this is just unbelievable. You know, you're in California, you're Washington D.C. I'm here. You know, we're just, you know, we're just really just loving each other up here. You know, and this is the light side. But there is a dark side, and the dark side is how addicting it could be. I mean, I don't know about you guys, like. I mean, Nora, you just got me onto Google Plus, right, in January. So do you know how addicting that could become as, like, I mean, I'm a grown adult. I have a consciousness about what's healthy for me and what's not healthy for me. And I, you know, I set limits. But kids don't have that, you know, and those, the, I think he called it, like, like microwaves or something from coming from wireless, you know, that it's just, it can really be detrimental to your children's health. So talk about setting limits. At least with the internet, not setting limits, I believe, because that really stifles growth on, on so many different levels. You know. Well, I'm gonna I'm like I want you to know, like you before I before you answered, you said that you're not really an expert, and I want to tell you what I saw, which made me know that you actually are an expert. An expert is such a weird word. I do. I know. You're tapped in, and you're feeling, and you're working well because. I saw Lucas come inside there and ask you and say, start the timer. He could have gotten some extra time, but he came in there and he, he, he reminded you to start the timer. That's true. He's, he's bought into that. You have, been, you have inspired him to buy into it. You're not telling him to turn off the TV and go and be bored, 
but you're actually showing him ways to utilize other parts of your body. The eyes, the brain, all of that is important, but you don't want to amplify that at the like while deteriorating your body. We still want to be active. We still want to do things. We still want to interact with things other than, you know, through a laptop and a computer. As wonderful as it is that we're able to see each other's faces, wouldn't it be so much better if after this hangout we were all able to just give each other a big group hug? Yeah, it is the truth. And that's what you're that's what you're teaching him right then and there. And right. I, I truly enjoy this because what I really wanted to show people today was the fact that the things that I say and the questions that I answer simply come from my heart space, me being tapped into understanding and loving. We all can do that. That is exactly what you're doing and I saw the effectiveness of it, not by the fact that you remember to set the timer, but that he asked you for that. He's an active and willing participant in yeah. this growth. Right. It wasn't easily one, but I'm not denying what you're saying, but there really was a lot of activity that, I mean, this was like the culmination of him not doing it a couple of times and losing his screen time, you know, so it, was, it was, wasn't just like, but that's the thing about parenting, it is, and you, you guys will see this maybe someday if you ever have kids, and it really is, so much of it is just like trusting your gut, you know, I mean, there are, you know, there are, there are no rule books, any parent knows that, it's like, and you make mistakes, and you learn, oh my gosh, I make mistakes all the time. But, you know, you just get up and you, you, you try it again. Well, I, I have one question. Do you sure. follow your same practices and set a timer for yourself on social media? Um, or screen yeah, time? Yeah, I do, in a certain sense. You know, I mean, I think it's more organic for myself because I... I do what I feel like I need to do. So some days it's going to be more, and some days it's going to be less. Like like today, this afternoon, it's just been want to hang out after the next. But but that's what I need to do today, you know. But you know what? There's an HOA that's going to be on tomorrow on Saturday, and I sort of made this a rule. Like I'm not I'm not doing HOAs on the weekend. So I am you know I am setting certain boundaries, and I don't spend as much time at all on the internet during the weekend. So I. I guess what I'm trying to say to you is that I don't feel like, no, this is it. I guess I don't feel like I need rules for myself because I'm just like I'm past that point. I think children need rules because they, they, they're children. They need those rules. But eventually, I think it just comes down to knowing what you need in each moment. You know what I'm saying? It's a decision every minute, you know, okay. I need to stay on this hangout a little bit longer. Okay, do I need to continue? Do I need to get off? What do I need to do next? And it's I try to live like that, is like like being present in the moment and choosing according to what I feel I need to do. You know, tapping into my intuition and my mind and using it all together. And if you live like that, in a way, you don't need rules. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You learn, the, you learn the rules and the fundamentals of an art. That way, when you have that ingrained, you transcend it, and then you can break them artfully within it's, the art. Exactly. Like, kids need rules, but hopefully after a while, they won't need them anymore. They'll just be able to make those choices for themselves. I mean, I, I think I've, you know, knock on wood, gotten to the point <laughs> in my life now where I... I think I have a clue. <laughs> I think I kind of know what I'm doing, you know? Not that I don't make mistakes all the time or have disappointments or whatever they are, but what do you got to do? Okay, I got to, like, I fell off the horse. I got to get back on and, and keep going, you know? Maybe there's a day when I need to hang out in bed all day, you know? I, whatever it is, you know, I try to really connect in with what do I need to do right now? Not what I want. I'm not talking about what I want, but what do I really need? You know, there's such a big difference between wants and needs. And when they come together, you know, then when what you really need becomes what you want, I think that you really come to a very special place in life. I don't know if that makes any sense. I may be getting a little too esoteric or something, but no, it means something to me. 
It gave me goosebumps, and a friend of mine on Facebook just gave me a quote. He said, if you're not giving people goosebumps at least once a week, then you're wasting your breath, and you're not really saying anything. And what you just said resonated 100% with me. Oh, great. Well, you know you and I really connect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and you too, loving Nora. <laughs> Thank you. It has been such a pleasure to have you on the show today. We will definitely do it again in the near future when we all have a little more time. So great. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing your experience and wisdom and time with us today. My Good pleasure. Time. Any final words, Copeland? No. <laughs> yeah, of course I got some final words. Like I said, this is just me. I just we brought Gail on here. And we're going to continue to bring people on occasionally because I want everybody to see that the things that I have access to, we all have access to. And it's simply a matter of coming from your heart space. Every single person on the planet has a heart space. Every single person on the planet can come from the heart space. And as Gail has shown, as Nora has shown, as I have shown, we're all showing that we can come from the heart space, and we can all do it in different places. We didn't learn how to do this together. All three of us came from different places. We're in different places right now, yet we're in the same place at the same time, doing the same things. So it's possible for everybody. Yeah, that's it. That's my last words. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Have a fabulous, fabulous weekend, and we will talk to you soon.